I was 26 and in love with life. It was finally happening for me, life. I was living in Washington, DC. Well, okay, it was Arlington, but it was in Pennsylvania and I was making it. I had two good jobs, my own car, and I had just moved out of my sister's basement into a group house. It was 2.30 in the morning on a Thursday and I was feeling great because I was coming home from my first real date. I was finally normal, someone who dated. You see, I was coming out and my world didn't crash in on me. I was coming out and I was happy. Not out to my friends and family at home yet, but that didn't matter right now. Well, I go to turn on my turn signal to make that last turn on my dead end street. When I look in my rear view mirror and there's just this bright light coming at me way too fast. And before you know it, I'm hit. So I hold the wheel steady and I go through the turn and I pull over to the side of the road. At the same time, the guy in the car behind me, he follows me through the turn and pulls over into the empty lot next to the KFC. Shit. I mean, I'm already strapped with the new rent and a car payment. So all I can think about is making sure this guy paid. I get out to check the damages. At the same time, this scruffy guy gets out of his car, which is one of those big old metal ones with one front seat. Oh man, uh, my brakes just went out on me, I don't know. Oh, well, um, yeah, that's okay, so maybe you can give me your insurance and we can do all this later. This, this goes on way too long. Every time I ask this guy for his information, he just starts stammering and stuttering and I start to get nervous. Maybe he doesn't have insurance, or maybe not a license at all. I'm about to give up when he pulls a slip of paper from his glove box. Yes! I grab a pen from my car and I go over to start writing it down. I am lying on my face in the gravel staring at a car wheel. This man is on top of me with his arm around my neck and there is a high-pitched sound coming out of my mouth. My body is fighting, but my mind is racing for a reason. What, what, what do you want from me? Just go, I don't care about the insurance. I won't turn you in. But he's not letting go, and we're wrestling to get his car door open. Shut the fuck up! And he pushes me into his car on my back with his hands on my throat. Do you want to fucking die? And he repeats it like he wants an answer. And I'm thinking, do I want to die, or like, what are my other options here? Because at the same time, I'm trying to think about how to get out of this. See, there was a moment when he pushed me into the car where I could have gotten my leg up and maybe got a good kick off to his groin, but that moment was over and I knew I couldn't push past him. Also, I felt like I was balancing on this thin line with him between him being angry and kill me angry. Because while he had his thumbs pressed into the soft part of my throat, he hadn't really pushed hard enough to cut off my, cut off my air. He wasn't trying to kill me, not yet. Do you want to fucking die? I have a knife. And finally I answered, no, no. And he forces me to get into the car and he gets me to tuck down into that area in front of the passenger seat. And I try one more time to solve this with reason. What do you want from me? When he says it, I want some fucking pussy. And he starts the car. Now I know it sounds crazy, but I was shocked when he said it. Pussy? My pussy? Please. All those years I couldn't get a man to pay attention to me. I had casual sex with men in hopes that somehow it would all magically work out. That it, it wasn't that men weren't attracted to me, or worse, I wasn't attracted to them, but just that I hadn't found the right man yet. But I was past all that. I had taken my stand. And here was this man in my, in my face as if to say, how dare you? No, pussy is easy. This was about power. I started to let it sink in. I started thinking, I don't think this guy has thought this through. <laughs> like, what is he gonna do with me after he rapes me? He must know I'll turn him in. I see his car, I see his face. Even if he's not a killer, he'll have to kill me. And where is he taking me? Like some cornfield 20 miles away? How am I gonna get away in a cornfield? No one will be able to hear me. And I can't run more than 20 yards. This car is going to need to turn around at the end of this dead end street, and I need to act, and I need to do it now. And I stopped thinking and making excuses for him, and I started feeling, and I was filled with the power of rage. You picked the wrong fucking person, asshole. Who do you think you are? Do you want to fucking die? And I got up in his face, and I scratched, and I scraped, and I felt my fingers go in his eye sockets, and I pushed hard. 
but he, he got the car turned around anyway. But at that moment, I broke free, and I got, the, got my latch on my door open, and I just dove into the gutter, and I rolled, and I just jumped right up, and I ran to the closest house I could find and just started pounding on the door. Someone let me in, please. And when they opened it, I went inside. <laughs> The cops came and took me to the station to look at a bunch of pictures. And there he was, same eyes, same face. They had a squad car waiting outside his house, and they picked him up and charged him with attempted rape and abduction. I came out to my parents about two weeks later because it was time, but mostly because I was afraid that it would come up in the trial where I'd been that night, that I was at a gay bar, and that they would pull some like man-hating lesbian defense on me. When the trial arrived, I showed up early and I was waiting in the hallway when I saw him. He was being led down the hall in handcuffs by some guards and we met eyes for about a second. Whew. I was gonna do this. I took the stand and answered the questions as calmly as I could, and then the defense attorney stood up. She asked me a bunch of questions to confuse me, and then she said, Miss Kelly, is it true that you were upset by the accident? Well, yeah, I was upset. Um, it's a new car, and I don't have a lot of money. You were upset, yes. Did you say to my client, who do you think you are? Yes, no more questions. No, wait, I mean, but not like you make it sound. When I let it sink in what he was gonna do to me, I, I said, who do you think you are? Because what gives him the right to do that to me? What makes his life more valuable than mine? I wasn't gonna let him do it. No more questions. <laughs> the jury deliberated for about an hour and came back with a verdict. Guilty on both counts. Before the trial, my parents had wanted me to move home where they could protect me, but they knew now that I wasn't a kid anymore. I wasn't. I was 26 and in love with life. In love with myself, it was finally happening for me, life. Thank you.